I flew around the world in business class during the pandemic, starting in London and flying all the way around the world, exploring as I go until I get back to London. This is over 30,000 miles. I flew some of the world's best airlines in business class along the way. Being that we're in the middle of a global pandemic, this involved many COVID tests and hotel quarantines. This is my story of how I did it. Starting at 8pm in London Heathrow, I've just got my results back for my first COVID test, completed a few hours earlier. It goes without saying this trip was done following all relevant guidelines with frequent PCR testing. I'm also fully vaccinated. Right, free security, nice and quiet, just how we like it. Most importantly though, we have Susan. Hello Susan. Right, first things first, let's get some champagne. Donuts and also to order some food. BA now do ordering off the app, which you're probably familiar with and seen on the channel before. Let's see what they have on tonight's menu. The loaded nachos, and we've got some champagne, which is the most important thing. So uh, cheers, guys. Before I get too carried away and miss my flight, I need to grab a transfer to Seagates. My well, picture, you want to get only people on this train? Actually, I am the only one on this train. Look at this. Few minutes later. Let's get up to the satellite terminal and find out what aircraft I'm flying today. Of course, it's my favourite A350000. Tonight's flight is a lot busier than I initially thought. Without any more to say, let's get on board BA's brand new business class suite. After stowing my luggage, it's time to get settled into the suite. It's such a great upgrade from BA's old yin yang business class. Each seat gets direct aisle access and there's even a small door for privacy. It's not long before the safety demo is performed, so I put my seatbelt on and we begin to push back. As we take off, let's take a look at our first flight of this epic round the world trip. First stop is Dubai, some three and a half thousand miles from London. Time to get those Tims off, kick back and relax. Firstly, however, I must complete some paperwork for entry into Dubai. Thankfully, this didn't take too long and before I knew it, dinner is served. It was actually pretty tasty, albeit still cutbacks and served out of a box. Okay, so here's hoping that that baby gets off to sleep soon. Let's change into my PJs, get my teeth brushed and make my suite up into a bed. I'm a huge fan of BA's bedding. They use the white company for this and the pillow especially is the most comfortable in the sky. I got around four hours of sleep, so not too bad. And I woke up just prior to our descent into Dubai. Right, so welcome to Dubai. We've literally just arrived trying to Oh, we're going to have some friends in the vlog. <laughs> ah, I forgot to mention, met some great lads from Google on this flight. Great to chat all things YouTube. So here's my stay in Dubai in 30 seconds. I stayed in the Burj Khalifa at the Amani Hotel. It was just a little bit extra. For example... Well, I know what it is. It's a 24 karat gold cup of coffee, but I mean, why? I mean, it's, it's definitely style over substance. And views from the 121st floor. I woke up early and went into the desert. But look at this! How crazy is this? One of the most epic experiences of my life. I went jet skiing, and if all this wasn't enough, I drove an F1 car. I think it's time for our next flight. Oh, hello there. <laughs> I would say good morning, but I haven't been to bed. So it's currently 4 a.m. Um, got all my bags packed because now we're going over to the US. Let me grab my stuff and get a taxi and head over to Abu Dhabi International Airport. Had a little bit of a sleep in the cab actually. I'm quite tired. Although now it is uh, almost half past five in the morning. Um, let's go through the first class section. Ah yes, yeah, so this part of the trip is actually gonna be in first class. Unfortunately, due to COVID, the first lounge is closed, so we'll slum it in the business class lounge today. As I'm flying into the US now, I can go through pre-clearance here in Abu Dhabi. So guys, let's get on board the uh, 787-9 that we're gonna be flying today over to JFK. 1K, as before, let's get settled in. Let's start proceedings with a refreshing glass of champagne. Cheers, guys. 
it's not long before we begin to push back on this mammoth 15 hour flight over to New York, covering a total of nearly 7,000 miles. As this is a super long flight, I want to try and get into US time zone as soon as possible. So first up, let's get my provided PJs on. So I feel a lot better now, they are super comfortable. Do a little twirl, yeah. And brush my teeth for bed. I'm going to try and sleep for the first part of this flight. The lovely FA made up the middle suite for me with this comfy Italian bed linen. See you in the morning for caviar. Well guys, it's a, uh, a good morning for the second time uh, today. So I've just been to bed and New York time is now 25 past six in the morning. I've also got a delicious looking cappuccino here. Catch up with you guys when I have got dinner service, breakfast service, whatever time of service it is, but. <laughs> Let's crack on with the caviar. If you've not tried it before, it may look a bit odd, but it's essentially fish eggs accompanied by bellinis, egg yolk, and creme fraiche. And yes, it tastes like the sea. Next up, steak. Now, Etihad is one of the few airlines that properly cooks these in a pan to your taste. And I can confidently say it's the best I've had on a plane. For the remaining flight time, I watched a movie and used the provided Wi-Fi to catch up on some work. Before I knew it, we're on final approach into New York City. Right, just landed in JFK. Now, of course, as you remember from earlier, we've arrived domestically. So that means no dealing with passport control, no dealing with customs. And instead, we go straight out, collect my bag and into the city. Sadly, due to the ongoing COVID restrictions, New York is only an overnight layover. Although it's enough for a burger, poke around Times Square, and a couple of beers with my friends. Super early start this morning. Now I've got to go over to Newark because the next part of this journey takes us over to the west coast of America. And we're trying a new airline as well. I'll explain more about when we get to the airport. Right, another day, another airport. Today, we're gonna to be trying out JetBlue, their mint product. Goodness me, it's throwing stuff everywhere. Bag has been checked. Uh, now, I've gotta go through security. As usual, TSA was packed. I really need to look into getting TSA pre-checked. Right, let's get on board. Quite excited about this one. Welcome on board what I consider to be the best business class in the US, JetBlue Mint. Yes, it's a narrow body plane, unlike Delta and AA's Transcon, but the overall product is phenomenal. It's certainly a cold one this morning. Just check out the other aircraft getting de-iced. Thankfully, it's not all too long before we begin to push back. Today's flight will take around five hours over to Las Vegas. As we begin to reach altitude, let's get those Tims off and get comfy. I'm also starving, so after consulting the menu, I've gone for the following. A fresh cappuccino. This came with a Danish pastry. After a short while, my full meal was served, and this consisted of the following. Pancakes, blueberries, maple bacon, and a poached egg with rice. Now, considering what Delta offers on the same route for double the price, I'm sure you can see my frustration with the legacy carriers. As I had such an early start, I'm going to take advantage of my suite's party piece. At the touch of a button, the seat converts into a fully flat bed. Of course, it also features a sliding privacy door. JetBlue provides ample bedding, so I got a really good rest, waking up just prior to my final approach into Vegas. All right guys, so welcome yeah. to Las Vegas. Goodness me, that was a, uh, it felt a very quick flight, but it was actually five and a half hours. You guys know the drill by now. Here's my time in Vegas in 30 seconds. Now I'm staying at the Venetian, so naturally I checked out the casino, which are actually open at the minute and explored a very surreal Venice. Like seriously, how bizarre. I don't know, I've been to some strange parts of the world, but a deserted Vegas is certainly one of the strangest. Next up, I hopped in the V8 and headed into the desert for 40 minutes over to the Hoover Dam. On the way back, of course, I had to have a spin class. It's now time to crack on with the trip. So where are we going next? I need to go over to the airport because we're gonna be going over to Los Angeles today. Right, let's get on this flight. It's only an hour and a half. Shouldn't be too bad. I don't think there's any kind of 
food and beverages on board, which is a shame because I'm quite parched. Hello, how's it going? Thank you so much. Oh dear, a short haul AA flight. Why didn't I just drive? This, believe it or not, is first class. Thankfully, it's only a short hop down to LA and seeing there's really not very much to feed back on this experience, let's focus on getting on our next long haul flight on a 777 in just a minute. Right, so welcome to Los Angeles. Goodness me, that was a pretty quick flight to be honest. It was about 45 minutes and I had thought it would be a little bit longer. But anyway, welcome. Let's go and sort out what I'm gonna do next. In fact, I'm gonna go rent a car, hopefully another V8. The next day. And the 30 seconds in LA starts now. Right, good morning guys. So we're off now to meet one of my buddies. I'm picking him up from the Beverly Hills uh, Four Seasons somewhere where I would not be allowed usually, so uh, that should be funny. He's got me a coffee, apparently. I've just picked up this cretin from his hotel, but also look what he's given me. How the hell am I gonna get this on a plane? How far do I need to take this? Where am I gonna have to take this, this, this thing? All the way to London, mate. And for some reason, James and I ended up in Hollywood in a private jet studio, reasons for which I'll have to share on my IG. So make sure you follow me over on there. Before leaving LA, of course, I've come to the very famous In-N-Out, which is at the beginning of the runway to try and get those cool shots. We need to go over to another airport to catch our flight, which is our super long flight. Um, I'm gonna be flying on American Airlines on their first class today and get on the Airbus A321 that we're gonna be taking. I think it's about a three hour flight we've got today down to Texas. Again, as this is just a feeder flight, we won't go into too much detail as we have a very exciting flight coming up next. AA's A321s have a 2-2 layout in business with the exception of the flagship product on the A321T which offers flat beds. It's not long before we push back and depart bound for Texas. In contrast to my previous AA flight, there were actually food and drinks on board which is great to see. After around three hours, we finally began our approach down into Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Well guys, welcome to Texas. Uh, I've got an overnight here and I fly again in the morning. So let's go over to the hotel and I'll explain the next steps. Welcome. Welcome to Texas. Well, welcome to an airport hotel here, obviously just overnight, but if I'm honest with you, I wish I had a bit more time. I've always wanted to see a bit of Texas, but I'm done. That said, guys, I'll catch you in the morning. Good night. You'd think the amount of time that I spend in an airport, I'd be slightly better at finding my way around, but no. Uh, this one's confused me. <laughs> so now I've finally found out where the uh, Admiral's Lounge is, which apparently I have access to. So let's head over there now, get a coffee, because I need to wake up. Oh, so found a little place to sit um, in the corner of the lounge. It's uh, it's pretty busy. Um, I was going to go and have a look. There's a Centurion Lounge I could go and have a look at, but it's uh, a little SkyTrain link away. So instead of doing that, I'm just gonna sit here, have a coffee, get on with some work, and then, of course, go over and grab my flight over to Hawaii. So we're on the we're on the 777 today, 777-200ER, uh, which has got their retrofitted, newer interior. Let's go and check it out. When flying over to Hawaii, you need to be quite careful on selecting your route and aircraft. It's more than possible to accidentally book a narrow body recliner seat for an eight hour flight. What's great about flights to Hawaii though, is that they are treated similarly to International or Transcon, so you get pretty much full service. Bedding and food is of course what I'm most excited about. It's not long before we begin to push back bound for Hawaii. This is actually one of the longest domestic routes that you can take at close to nine hours. To put that into perspective, you could fly from London to India in around the same time. As I mentioned, service today is not far off normal. I pre-selected the Surf and Turf, which came with a starter of burrata and a chocolate torte dessert. Not bad at all, AA. 
Unfortunately, this is where the service ground to a halt, and none of the FAs were to be seen until about an hour before landing. Whilst disappointing, I chose to catch up on some well-deserved sleep, as I've been seriously lacking it. Many hours later, I awoke to find us on final approach into Honolulu. I'm super excited as I've never been here before. Unfortunately, as you'll find out in a second, this is quite a bittersweet visit to tropical paradise. All right, guys, it is a welcome to Hawaii. You can see the plane that we've just been on, just here. So I guess this is the perfect time to explain exactly what happens when you arrive into Hawaii at the moment. Uh, in usual times, of course, you would just go through and arrive domestically, as you would throughout the rest of the US. However, at the minute, they've got a separate quarantine procedure, but you can negate that if you've had a test. So now I've got to wait in a queue. Everybody that arrives, unless you've got the exemption, you have to queue up here for, uh, it looks like it's probably going to be about 40 minutes. Well, there we go. I've made it uh, out of the airport and now to try and get an Uber. Um, it's, it's coming, it should be here in a few minutes. Basically, that was, uh, I suggest, it was, guess it was organized chaos. Um, the whole point is that you arrive and you either have a test, or like me where I'm only here for a couple of days, I don't have a test and I have to go into the quarantine in the hotel, which is fine because I'm only here for two days. The issue though, is that everyone mixes. Now, you may rightly ask, why have I not had a test? Well, I did, but in LA. For Hawaii, you have to do this at your final departure point, and as I had an overnight layover in Dallas, this would not have been valid for my entry into Hawaii. So sadly, whilst I've made it to Hawaii, and I'm negative, I won't be able to leave my hotel here. Oh, well guys. Oh, it is aloha, I have arrived, wow. Um, Goodness me, so this will be my quarantine pad for the next couple of days. Um, it's got a lovely guava juice to crack open. But I do have this balcony, which is great. Cheers. Whilst uneventful, my hotel quarantine wasn't all that bad. I caught up on work and even sunbathed on my balcony. Food had to be delivered to my room and I literally couldn't exit in any way. I also had to check into this app each morning to say that I'm still at this hotel. Two days later. Right, so mask, oh, mask on. And it's time to leave my hotel quarantine and off to the airport. It seems that there is a shuttle. Um, but I think I might be able to walk it. I'd prefer walking it if I'm gonna sit on a plane for the next six hours. But look at this lad, he's running, he's running. He's probably just realized that the uh, gates are not as close as you'd think. But uh, yeah, anyway, I really do like the fact that so much of this airport is outside. It reminds me of uh, an airport in Thailand. I think it's uh, the Koh Samui airport run by Bangkok Airlines. I finally made it to Seagate and with it my next stop. San Francisco, on board Hawaiian's A330 in first class. Well, that's what they call it, but let's be honest, it's business class. Hawaiian operate a 222 layout on their A330s, which as you can see, kind of offers direct aisle access to each seat, kind of. It's not long before the safety video is played and we begin to push back. Flight time today will be roughly five hours at a distance of two and a half thousand miles. Don't know about you, but I'm starved. Let's order some food. I started off with an island cocktail. This was delicious, so I ordered another. You'll notice Hawaiian use iPads for their IFE, which is a bit different, and unfortunately, there's not a huge selection of movies. For food, I went for the spicy chicken, which was incredible. Again, it's a shame there wasn't all much to choose from, but I guess COVID and all that. With dinner finished, I think it's time for, you guessed it, a nap. The beds do fold fully flat and seem pretty comfortable as there's no foot cubby. I slept for the rest of the flight and when I awoke we were on final approach into San Francisco. That was a, uh, a pretty a pretty quick flight and certainly quicker than the route that I took over there. Anyway, I've now got to go through to go and get my bags and then head over into downtown San Francisco. The next day. Right guys, so welcome to San Francisco. It's my first morning here actually only here for a couple of days so trying to make the most of it up nice and early and of course today we're going to be renting a car going to explore around the area look who we've got as well back on the vlog 
Chapeau! <laughs> Goodness me. Let's see what James and I get up to in 30 seconds. We picked up the Jeep from downtown. First up is a trip down Lombard Street. Yes, you may have noticed Diego the stuffed dog is back. James is insistent I take him back to London. Next up, Fisherman's Wharf to see the sea lions, noisy as always. And last of all, we drove around 30 minutes out of town to see the redwoods. All in all, another jam-packed visit, but now it's time to head to the airport for my next super long haul flight. That's right, you've guessed it. What would a round the world trip be without Qatar Airways on their gorgeous A350? Let's get on board. Of course, if you're a regular subscriber, you'll know my love for Q-Suites, which is Qatar's business class. I'd say it's on par with some airlines' first class products. I have a selection of suites to try today, including the insta-famous double bed. As mentioned, my buddy James is joining me on this flight. He actually has his own YouTube channel, so do go and check that out after the video. It's not long before pushback, and with that, we've taken off into the sunset and on this mammoth 15 and a half hour flight over to the other side of the world. I guess it's time for some food. I started off with a beautiful butternut squash soup, accompanied by a delicious glass of LP Rosé, my favourite. For my main, I opted for Lobster Firmador, which was spectacular. I make it time for some sleep. It's actually an acceptable time for a nap now. Let's change into my white company PJs and get those teeth brushed. And my word, look at this bed. How is this on a plane, let alone on business class? <laughs> Good night, everyone. Many hours later. I woke up on final approach. I can't quite believe how much I slept on this flight. I really must have needed it. Oh, guys, I feel so refreshed. Oh, so I don't know how many of you know that feeling after you get off a long flight and have a lovely shower, change your clothes, goodness me. Well, that was an awesome first part of our journey. Of course, we still have quite a way to go. Ah yes, the last flight to my home, London. I grab my face shield and head over to the jet bridge. Tonight, we're on the Boeing 777, which also has Q-Suites installed. Of course, being that we've just seen Q-Suites, I'll save this time to sleep some more. Which do you prefer, the double or single Q-Suite? I slept for the majority of the flight, and I awake as we descend into lockdown London. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed my epic round the world trip. I can't wait to share many more videos with you over the coming months. Stay safe and ciao.